Cool. Well, thank you, everybody. Recording. So got it. Thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. Uh, Nate covered so much ground that I, things that I usually say he's already covered. So we don't even have to do that. But Emma, you're getting lots of love on your outfit this evening already in the uh, in the chat. So thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yes, if you have any questions as we go, please feel free to put them in the chat and I will pass those along to Emma as she is painting. And um, as Nate said, we are recording the class. So if you feel like you're getting a little bit behind or you'd rather just watch the first time through and then go back and paint later, you can always do that. Um, because of course, these classes are posted on Michael's uh, YouTube channel and also on their website, michaels.com slash classes, which we will post that link a couple of times throughout the evening. Um, so yeah, this is gonna be a fun painting tonight. It's got a... Um, a, a, con, a, a, a cool, fun vibe. Um, Daisy Polaroid is the name of it. And so I will pass it off to Emma and we will get started. Awesome. Thank you so much, John. So I want to give a big thank you to everyone for joining us tonight. We love our Monday night paint, paint classes and we um, certainly love painting with you all. <laughs> um, so like John said, we are painting tonight at a Daisy Polaroid painting, this really cute little painting using folk art acrylic paint. Um, as normal, I will go through the supply list just so we all make sure that we have all of the things that we need to get started tonight. And like always, if you have any questions about um, paint or color substitutions, then you can list them in the chat and John can answer those questions or relay those questions over to me. So let's go ahead and get started by going over what we listed in the supply list to follow along tonight. So you're gonna need uh, number one, an eight by 10 canvas. Um, any type of eight by 10 canvas will work fine. Um, we are making this little Polaroid. So any type, of, any type of rectangle canvas would be best so that we can kind of get the square image and to make it really look like a Polaroid. Um, you are going to want some painter's tape. So you can use painter's tape, stencil tape, even washi tape would work great. Um, any kind of tape uh, to keep the paint off of your canvas. Next, you're gonna need some folk art medium yellow, some folk art navy blue, folk art wicker white, folk art raw sienna, folk art teal, and folk art clover. So you're gonna need six paints tonight. And then you are going to want to have um, a brush pack that includes a um, like a one inch flat brush, um, some smaller flat brushes, maybe even a liner brush towards the end when we add in our lettering. Um, and then you are gonna want to have some uh, filbert brush, a small filbert brush. So if you don't know what a filbert brush is, it is a kind of like a flat brush, except it is rounded at the tip. You see that? And that's gonna help with our petals. So you can definitely do this painting tonight if you don't have a filbert brush, but um, it would definitely be a lot easier if you had one just to uh, make it easier on you throughout the painting. You're also gonna need a stencil brush. We wanna keep this one dry and a pencil and that's all. So let's go ahead and get started you guys. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna tape off our canvas. So grab your tape and your canvas and we are gonna peel long strips and um, we're really masking off all of this white part so that we can get a little bit sloppy and messy on the inside part of our painting and not have to worry about having to maintain those straight lines. That would be a nightmare. Okay, I'm just gonna try to match this up. So we are going about maybe three, two and a half inches from the bottom. I'm doing this just to make sure that it lines up pretty well. And just, you know, eyeball it, make sure it's as straight as you can get it, but don't feel the need to measure it. That's not necessary. Just get it as straight as you can get it. Doesn't have to be perfect. And now what we wanna do is we want to tape off about a half inch from each of these three sides. So let's go ahead and do that. So part of our tape is gonna be hanging off. So sometimes you can kind of see through the tape to see what, um, what portion of the tape is touching your canvas and what portion is not. 
And if you want to even flip it over, because it'll be easier to see how much is hanging off in the back, that looks nice. And go ahead and seal that down. And one thing that I want you all to be mindful of is we really want to make sure that our tape is flush with our canvas, because if there's any spaces where our tape is not touching our canvas, and that means that it's going to be a little tunnel for the paint to slide through, and we don't want that. We want to keep it nice and flush. And do we have any questions so far, John, while we're taping off our canvas? No, I think, no, I think we're good. Just a couple of people had asked uh, about the canvas size, eight by 10. Can we paint black-eyed Susans in the same format? Sure, if you want to change up the colors, why not? That would be up to you. Yeah, that's the best thing about floral paintings on our paint lives too, is that even the switch of uh, a blue to a pink or yellow to a purple can totally change the uh, the type of flower if the yep. composition is loose enough. Okay, um, so great. Yeah, and if you don't, someone was saying they don't have the teal. If you don't have the teal, of course, yes, you can use Cayman blue or or evergreen or, or mix up a little teal with a little blue and green, you know. Yeah, Cayman blue have, is a great fine. substitution. Yeah, like we said, the whole point of our paint night lives, it's just to have fun. So grab whatever you have and um, try to find the closest colors you can and it you can definitely have fun and paint along. All right, so let's introduce some paints to our palette. What we're gonna wanna put um, on our palette firstly is teal and wicker white. Okay, so we're gonna grab a larger flat brush. And I just wanna go over again, with, just run my finger along where my uh, tape is just to make sure it's really flush to my surface. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to start um, base coating our teal at the top of our paint uh, taped off section. Okay. And just a thin coat, we're not trying to uh, glob on a bunch of paint. evening it out. And now we're not gonna even, uh, let's actually do a little bit more before we start to ombre. We're about to ombre this, you guys. I don't know if I've ever done a paint night with you all without ombre before. <laughs> okay, without even um, wetting our brush, we're just gonna offload a little bit. And that just means we're gonna brush onto our palette, removing the paint most of the paint that's on our brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick up some of my wicker white. And I'm gonna start in the middle here and just kind of work my way down. And see how that teal that was on our brush, um, it is mixing with the wicker white while we're just brushing and we're getting um, a lighter aqua color. Okay. And um, if you're struggling, before I say that, let's now go up and back, uh, up and back, <laughs> up and down, just picking up the wet paint as we go up and down, creating that subtle gradient. And if you're struggling with this, um, water is an ombre's best friend. So just add a little bit of water to your brush and hopefully that'll make the, um, your gradient a little bit smoother. And I'm actually gonna add some water myself. And I'm gonna start from the bottom and go up to the top. I had to seal that tape down. It was wanting to open up. Okay. And do you know what? I don't even know if I have my, my trusty uh, hair dryer with me. Oh, all right. Let me see if I can get you one. Thanks, John. I think there's one by my desk. One right here where I'm sitting. Okay, so we're really just trying to smooth out that gradient. 
and look how beautiful. Okay, so let's go ahead and rinse our brush. Thank you, John. How could I have forgotten that? Oh, oops. Now we just need a place to plug it in. Because Okay. Oh, wait a second, let you guys all catch up. I'm just kind of trying to keep my tape down and flush to my surface. Okay, so now that we have our white onto our palette, I'm gonna introduce some navy blue. And if you don't have any navy blue, midnight would work. Um, we don't wanna go for black for this one tonight, just because we don't really want that harshness of black. Um, because I'll show you what we're about to do with our navy blue. And this is where our um, stencil brush comes into play. So um, if you've ever stenciled before, you know that a dry stencil brush is the best kind of stencil brush to have because uh, once your stencil brush is wet, it's really not gonna do the same thing that you would want your dry stencil brush to do. So we wanna have our dry stencil brush and we're not gonna stencil with this tonight, but I'm gonna show you how to use, thank you so much, John. I'm gonna show you how to use a stencil brush to make clouds, okay? So before we get into that, I'm just gonna go ahead and blow dry my canvas just to make sure that my paint is pretty dry before we move on to this next step. Is that long enough to cord? Or yeah, it's perfect. Not, I can no, this is perfect. Okay, so now we are going to apply some of our wicker white, wicker white to our stencil brush, but we don't want a lot of wicker white on our stencil brush, not as much as we would add to our flat brush. We, I'll show you guys how much we're looking for. So we're looking for about that much. And now we're gonna even offload from that onto our paper towel. And like we talked about offloading just means removing some of that excess paint. So we're just gonna go in a swirl motion onto a paper towel or palette, whatever you got. Maybe you removed a little bit too much. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to dab um, in a perpendicular motion onto our canvas where we want the top of our clouds to be. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and maybe even a little bit more than the top of our clouds, maybe like the top half of our clouds. And let's try to be mindful as we do this of where we want our flowers to live. Okay, so we definitely want to leave space for our flowers. And I just saw that I'll put the finished painting in the screen. And I'm going to apply a little bit more white and I'm going to go ahead and do a little too much paint. I'm going to go ahead and do my second cloud. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to um, offload as much paint from our stencil brush onto our paper towel as we can without adding any water. And what we're gonna do is we are actually going to do this swirl motion right over that paint that we just dabbed down, okay? So it looks like that. It looks like beautiful. Where are my uh, meteorology people? What kind of clouds are these? Cumulus clouds? Maybe cumulus. That's the only kind of cloud I can think of. So. <laughs> okay. So now that we have that white part, um, we are going to start adding some other colors into our clouds. So now we're gonna pick up a little bit of Midnight and offload that and a little bit of Teal, offload that where we offloaded our Midnight. Is that making sense, you guys? And now we're gonna offload even more onto a paper towel. And now we're gonna go in this middle or this bottom section, okay? And the reason that I like to, um, you know, you'll see me offload once onto my palette and then offload a second time 
onto my paper towel is because the paper towel is so absorbent. It really wants to take all that paint. And this is just kind of like a waxy material. So it's not gonna like really absorb the paint like I would want it to because the surface is so slick. Okay, so now that we have our midnight and teal concoction on the bottom and we're kind of swirling and blending that into our background, we're gonna go ahead and with the blue still on our brush, pick up a little bit of wicker white and offload that. And now you'll see again, we have this really beautiful light aqua color. And now we're gonna go right in the middle of our clouds. Okay. So we're dabbing first and then we're offloading it again. And now we are swirling to blend. Okay. And um, maybe I'll even swirl really, really, really as much paint as I can off onto my paper towel and add some more white to our top. See, that's beautiful. Gorgeous. Offload once again, so that we are really able to blend. Because if we didn't offload before we blended by uh, doing this swirling formation, then we, uh, we wouldn't be really blending as much with this technique, as much as just adding more paint. We don't wanna add more paint, we want to mix the paint that is already on our canvas. And this is just a stencil brush. This is a one inch stencil brush, or sorry, half inch stencil brush. Um, Michael has a bunch of different stencil brushes. I'll show you guys what it looks like. It's just kind of this round brush. Maybe we'll add a little bit more teal and midnight. And I saw that question too. Somebody was asking if the bristles are the same length. No, it's a kind of a rounded tip. It doesn't have that guillotine um, cut to it. You guys see that? And that's just kind of the stencil brush that I prefer. I don't prefer that really smooth chop where all the bristles are the same length. I like a little bit of variety. I just find that um, it works better. Okay, and maybe I'm looking at my original painting. That's the tough part, you guys, is painting this um, initially and then uh, painting it again with all of you all. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add some more white to really light so those clouds. If they don't have a stencil brush, some people were wondering if they could use a little sponge maybe for that or- Yes, absolutely. If you guys have a different technique for making clouds, then by all means, please use that technique tonight. This is just um, hopefully a new exciting way if you've never done it this way before. Um, it's just a fun little unique way to make clouds and it is really easy too. So that's why we're doing this tonight. But if you don't have a stencil brush or you prefer a different way to make clouds, then please, please do that. Okay, beautiful. Look at those beautiful cumulus clouds. They are cumulus. I had, I looked that up. Oh, and thank in you fact, very much, John. White puffy clouds are cumulus, which comes from the Latin cumulo, meaning to okay. heap or pile. So to, now you all have what? learned some Latin this evening, in addition to painting. To what or pile? To heap or pile. Oh. Like heap it on. All right. Cumulo. Okay, so now you guys, we can go ahead and stick our stencil brush in our water basin. Okay, so now we are going to add some medium yellow onto our palette. Okay, and we are going to pick up our a small flat brush. Um, it's a number six flat. So I'll show you how big that is. Next my pointer finger for reference. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, okay, so here's a tip for you guys at home. Um, if you struggle with the opacity of your yellow acrylic paint, um, yellow is just one of those colors that it really is um, one of the trickier colors to really achieve an opaque um, look to it. I like to add just a touch of white to my yellow, not enough to really um, affect the color, but just enough to really add some opacity into our yellow. Um, white really does help with that. You'll find that um, a lot of times in paint, colors that are lighter, like your lavenders and your like, you know, light blues and um, pistachio colors 
are a little bit more opaque than like a really true, like, you know, um, a really true purple or blue because um, there's no white in those true pigments. And there is white in those lighter pastel colors. So let's add a little bit of uh, white to our yellow to help with the opacity tonight. And so this is where we get to have a little bit of fun and start thinking about the composition of our flowers. So of course, we're gonna have three flowers, but it's up to you, you can choose how many flowers you wanna have. And I wanna have one kind of higher and then one a little bit lower than that on my right side and then one in the middle. So what we're gonna do is we are going to show you guys, so you can see, we are going to make a swoop this way like that. And then we are going to mirror that motion, make a swoop that way, okay? And maybe we'll even make it a little bit bigger. We're gonna swoop that way and then swoop this way again. And then we're gonna fill in our swoop shapes. Let's add one a little bit lower to our right side. Is my head in the way? No, nope, you're good. And all of our flower centers, they don't need to be the same uh, size. So don't worry about that. I'm just going over some of that paint, just filling in some spots where it looks a little bit blue. Filling in my yellow. Beautiful. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we can go ahead and rinse this brush. We are going to um, add some raw sienna onto our palette. And we don't want a whole lot. We just want a um, tiny bit, okay? And we are going to take uh, a touch of that raw sienna and we're gonna mix it with some wicker white. So we're looking for like a one to six ratio of raw sienna to wicker white. And this is where we're gonna introduce our filbert brush. Like we talked about in the beginning, if you're just joining us, a filbert brush is has a rounded tip and that's gonna help with the um, painting of our petals on our flowers. So I'm just gonna take a touch of the raw sienna and a lot of our wicker white. And we are just trying to make a really, really soft, warm kind of off-white color. Maybe even a touch of yellow if you think you need it. Hmm, it's nice. Some more white. So if you don't have raw sienna, can you use a different sort of brown, I guess? Yeah, you can use a different brown. You can use like a really, a kind of burgundy would, would work great too. Any kind of dark red or brown would be great for this. Or even like a, a dark orange, you know, the, orange, the orangier, the better. <laughs> I guess really the yellow or the better. Okay, so now we're gonna to start to um, make our petals. So we are going to, um, you know, apply some of our off-white color to our filbert brush. And we are going to kind of start at the inside and I'll show you guys this off of the canvas first. So if you want to practice on your palette, 
that's great. Um, and here's what we're gonna do. So we are going to, you know, lay our filbert brush flat. And then we are going to kind of make a comma stroke going up. I bet you guys can't see that. Let me do it on my canvas so you guys can get a better view. So we are gonna start like this, flat, and we're gonna make a comma stroke and we are going to ever so slightly turn our brush when we go towards yeah. our button. Hold it up a little higher to the camera when you're done. Yeah, there we go. Now we can see, yep. We're gonna turn Just... and meet, okay? We're gonna go flat and then turn and then meet. Does that make sense? Yep. We're gonna go, it's harder on this side, I'm right-handed. We're gonna go flat and then turn and then meet, okay? And so we are not gonna be too um, worried about how close together they are because this is just our uh, darker color. So maybe we'll do four of this color petals, making that flat and then turn and then meet motion. You can practice that as much as you like. If it's not perfect the first time, give yourself some grace. Um, you can always fill it in with a small brush later. But let's say we will give four petals, four or five petals of that color to each of our flowers. So let's go ahead and do that together. And we're gonna start about you know half an inch from where our um, bud is. So that we're kind of curving in. Like we're not quite starting underneath, we're starting out a little bit. Does that make sense? Yeah. They kind of look like little octopi. You know what, John, since we're on a like science and Latin kick, I learned mm -hmm. this weekend that um, I thought that octopi was like the only proper plural version of octopus, but it actually mm -hmm. is octopi or octopuses. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> Octopuses? <Thank> you. <laughs> yeah, like that's what you want to say, but it really is octopi. Apparently, it is both. It says octopi is the oldest plural of octopus, coming from the belief that Latin origins should have Latin ending. Octopuses is the next plural, which gives the word an English ending to match its adoption as an English word. So there we are. There you go. We are ready for we jeopardy, done. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> If it's all about octopuses and clouds, we're great. Beyond that, we're not in such great shape. But, yeah, what a weird episode that would be. Um, I didn't even know that that was going to be like a hidden Latin lesson. I thought that was just going to be science again. What colors did you use to make your off-white? So you had just a touch of raw sienna with mostly white and then a little touch of yellow, right? Correct. Absolutely. Look. Look at you, John. Next week, you're doing this. I was paying attention. <laughs> it's easy for okay. me to state it. Painting it, however, I'll leave that to you. Okay, fair enough. All right, so um, another thing I wanna just point out too is that um, you know it might look nice if like the flowers that are directly under the bud are a little bit longer or shorter than the ones that are more towards the side. That would give your um, flower definitely some some beautiful dimension. But um, now that you added this off-white color of petals, we're going to go ahead and rinse our brush, our filbert brush. Make sure it's nice and dry. We're going to dry it. And we are going to do the same thing that we just did, except we're going to go in between our off-white color with just some regular white. And so these two colors are really just giving this flower lots of beautiful dimension. Doing the comma, touching up. Okay, and the tops of these petals, just so we don't have those blue gaps, they can be a little bit more thick than the um, off-white color. Maybe we'll add one to the edge here. Does that make sense when I say the tops can be a little bit more thick? We're just, we don't really wanna see a lot of that blue color coming through from our beautiful blue sky. 
And um, if, you're not, if you haven't noticed already, the more pressure that we apply to our paintbrush, the thicker the brush stroke is gonna be, okay? So if you want your petal to be a little bit thicker, um, just apply more pressure to your brush. Now, Emma, these second set of petals, these ones you're doing over the top, is that just basically straight white you're doing? Or did you add? This, is, you add this is just straight white, yep. Okay. And I'd like to, um, it, it looked nice if we gave some um, variety of length to our petals. So maybe if our off-white is a little bit longer and if, um, our white is a bit shorter and vice versa. And feel free if you don't like the original placement, you can go back with your off-white color and kind of fill in a little bit. So maybe we'll make this guy a little bit wider. Okay. I'm just going over some of my white just to make it a tiny bit more opaque. Okay, now what I like to do is um, if you kind of came a little bit close to the center of your flowers and you went over, then you can go ahead and just touch it up with um, some yellow and a, just a touch of white like we had going on before to just really smooth that round shape out. Okay, so now if you like what you have, let's go ahead and lock our painting in place by hitting it with our blow dryer. Okay, and now that we have our raw sienna on our palette, we are going to um, give a little bit dimension to the center, a little bit of dimension to the center of our flowers. So go ahead and grab a small flat brush and apply a little bit of your raw sienna to the tip of your flat brush, just a tiny bit. We're not gonna apply a whole bunch. And we're gonna offload that raw sienna onto our paper towel. And then you can kind of see here in um, the corner, like the curvature of our um, centers, we have some a darker color. And that's really just kind of creating a little bit of dimension to our flowers. So we're gonna go ahead and copy that. And we are going to do a very similar motion like we did for our clouds. We are going to um, pat, pat, pat uh, perpendicularly to that curve right here is where we're gonna do it, all right? And we are going to uh, apply more paint on the left side and apply less paint when we get to the right side. Ooh, 
And if you have um, and a trick to this too, you guys, you just wanna make sure that you really don't have much paint at all on your brush. Okay. That was a little too much paint, but we can fix it. I didn't offload enough. Okay, without rinsing our brush, if you want to add a, you know, a little bit more subtlety to what you just did there, without rinsing our brush, we are going to offload as much as we can of our brown onto our paper towel, and we are going to pick up a little bit of our medium yellow, and we're going to offload that as well. And we're going to kind of go over and right up against our brown where we see that we had a little bit too much. And we're kind of doing this very similar thing like we did with those clouds earlier. We are just going to blend those colors together, our brown and our yellow. Okay, so we get something a little bit more like this. Okay. So how are we doing, John? I think we're doing fine. Okay. So now what we are going to do is we are going to add some stems to our flowers. Go ahead and uh, put that brush into your water basin and introduce some clover onto your palette. Okay, so we are looking to have a small flat brush. Really, um, we want to have a small of a flat brush as the width that we want our flower stems to be. And this is gonna be really simple, you guys. We're gonna apply some clover onto our brush and we're gonna make a long swoop line um, connecting our flowers to wherever they are growing in the ground. So maybe we'll do one here. And one thing I like to do when I paint my flower stems is I like to give them a little bit of a curve because um, I just think it makes it look more whimsical than if it were going up and down um, totally straight. And it makes it look a little bit more natural too. So add one there. And let's add one here. going back over our brush stroke with more paint if we need to. And something I'm gonna do right now to add a little bit more dimension is I'm gonna pick up some of my clover right there and some of my medium yellow, and I'm gonna mix those together and this is going to create uh, a really beautiful kind of dark teal color. And this is going to be a little highlight. Oh, I just shook the camera. So um, we are going to apply this, but instead of putting it flat like we did our stems, we're gonna kind of do it where the tip is touching and not the flat part of the brush, okay? So we are going to, um, right on the left side of our stem, we are going to touch the stem with the tip of our brush and just give it that highlight. I'll show you guys what I mean. So on the left side, we are adding that mixed clover and medium yellow mixture that we created. And we are adding a little bit of highlight onto our stems. And go ahead and offload some paint and give it a good once over with very little to no paint on your brush. Um, and that'll kind of help it blend. Okay. Maybe add some more clover to the right side to really get that sharp definition. Okay. And now let's go and add some leaves. So with clover, we are going to do a swoop and a swoop till we get the leaf shape that we want. And we're gonna fill it in. 
with our, our clover. We are, did you guys see that okay? We're doing a swoop and closing it, swoop. Like that. And we're gonna fill it in again. Let's go ahead and let's just go straight in with our yellow, just a touch of yellow since we have some green on our brush. And we are going to add some highlights there and there where we have our leaves, okay, with the yellow. And then we're gonna offload and give it a once over to blend. And when I say give it a once over, I really just mean with, with no paint or very, very little paint, we're just making the same mark we did with the yellow and kind of blending it down with no paint. We're just picking up that yellow and we're moving it towards our green. Okay. And, um, you know, keep nitpicking with that until you like what you get. A little bit more yellow. And blend it. Can you hold us up, hold it up um, close for people to see how you did your highlights? Yeah, oh. see that? So maybe we'll even add some yellow to our stems here. And uh, you notice I skipped the leaf part of the stem. We're going to skip that. And some yellow and offload and blend with no paint on our brush. And like we said earlier, water is your friend when you blend. Okay, what do we think you guys? Looks good, Emma. Awesome. Okay. So now here's the fun part. We get to remove the tape and see them, our beautiful creation. Um, this is always so satisfying <laughs> when you uh, watch artists who do like watercolor and they like to tape off their, um, wherever they're painting and then they remove the tape. Gosh, that's the best part, isn't it? It like itches something in my soul. <laughs> oh, that is so nice. Okay, beautiful. Awesome. Yeah, that looks great. <laughs> okay, you guys. So now we get to add our sweet little message. So you can do whatever message you'd like. You can do be kind. You can do um, smile, um, love, um, family, whatever speaks to you. But tonight we're going to do be kind. So now we're going to need our pencil. So everybody grab your pencil. And I have total faith in you guys. And I believe that you can all follow along and do this with me. But if you are super duper nervous and you um, don't feel like you can, then you can always use a stencil for this next step. Or you can find, um, you know, a font that you love and you can write your own message on the computer and then print it out and then transfer it with some transfer paper. But I'm going to show you guys how to do this be kind. And I really think you can all do it with me. So let's start. Um, one thing that we want to keep in mind when we're uh, writing this font is that we want uh, our letters to all be the same length. Okay. And that's really something that's key to this kind of style of font. So let's go ahead and it's a lot of straight lines that we're gonna be connecting, okay? Really our only two letters that have any type of curvature to it um, is the B and the D. So it's a lot of straight lines. And I know you guys can all paint straight lines or even write straight lines because you just did this beautiful daisy painting. So let's do it. We are going to make one straight line for our B. Okay, and we're gonna leave a little bit of space for the loops of our B, and we are going to put another straight line for our E at the same length, okay? And let's go ahead for spatial reasons, we will give our E, what are those called? I definitely know those have a name. What, now you're gonna have me looking something else up? <laughs> no, never mind. What, what, is, what are we looking up, the little 
parts of the E? Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Okay. okay, so we just made that with our E. It was a bunch of straight lines. Okay. We're not even worried about those curves yet. And now we're going to leave a little bit of space and go in with our K, the K line. Leave a little bit of space for the two lines that come out of the K. And we're going to do our straight line for our I. And the reason I like to do all these straight lines first is because um, sometimes it's harder for our eyes to see if they are all matching up and looking similar, if we have those other lines, I know it sounds silly, but it is true. When we see all these straight lines together, we can say, oh yeah, those are definitely the same height. So that's why I like to do all of the other lines in the end. Okay, so K, I, we don't need to really leave any space for our N. Our N, go down and go up. And now our D, we made it. Okay, so let's go ahead and add all of the other parts to our letters. I feel like I'm in kindergarten again. Okay. We left with according some to lines. according to fonts.com, the bar is the horizontal stroke in characters such as A, H, R, E, and F. Things like that, like the lowercase F. Is that what you're asking? The bar? Thanks for looking that up, John, but that doesn't ring a bell. That doesn't scratch my soul. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see. I, okay, I well, John's to, looking can, that up for us. There's all kinds of different parts. There's a there's an arm and a leg. There's an, an, an ascender, the part wow. of a lowercase letter that extends above the X height. I'll tell you what. That's a lot. If you want to go to fonts.com, you can do a little reading after the class this evening, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Okay, so let's continue writing the rest of our letters. So we are going to make the loops of our B. And there you go. We totally did that together. And now we um, see how the beginning of the letter, like the first stroke is a lot thicker than the rest of the strokes. So we wanna be mindful of that. We wanna leave some space for that. So let's put one line down on our B. I'll show you guys what I mean like that, okay? And we're gonna continue that down. So we're gonna add those two lines of our K. And now we're gonna add our, our other line like that. We're gonna make the, our I a bit thicker. There we go. The beginning of our N a bit thicker. There we go. We're gonna make the curved part of our D. Beautiful. And now the thicker part of our D in the beginning. That's the stem, the straight part, just saying. Oh, thank you, John. What would we do without you, John? I mean, <laughs> it would be far less enjoyable. I can only say that. That's tr very true. All right, so now that we have our pencil lines, it is like a coloring book, you guys. We get to fill this in. So let's put our pencil away, and I'm gonna go for a thin liner brush. And I, we have some midnight on our palette. And if we wanna rehydrate it a little, excuse me, we can do that by just putting some water on our brush. We're not trying to dilute the paint much. We are just adding some water to really help the paint move. Um, sometimes with acrylic paint, it can, it is so, I mean, our folk art acrylic paint is so rich and creamy. Um, sometimes when you're making these really fine lines like this, it is helpful to add just a touch of water to really get things going. Okay, so now you guys, let's fill it in. And you can just see just how beautifully that folk art navy goes on. Kelly, we do not currently have paint markers in the folk art line, but um, that would be another way that you could for sure do this if you wanted to try to do that. Yeah, absolutely.
And what, what kind of brush are you using, um, Emma? Just a little liner brush, you say? Yes, I'm using a just super tiny liner brush. Great. But I mean, if you are used to making lines like this in a painting, use whatever you're comfortable with. Picking up more paint as we need it, maybe adding a touch more water if we are wanting our paint to flow a little bit easier, but we're still trying to be mindful that we don't want to add too much water where our paint um, and water will bleed onto areas of our canvas that we don't want it to end up. Looking good, looking good. Maybe I'll even uh, go with my flat brush for some of those thicker lines. Speed it up a little bit. Okay, let's go with our really tiny flat brush we have here. Oh, beautiful. And Emma, what color did you use again to make your um, your lettering? This is navy blue. Uh, midnight would work. Black would work for this. Really any color. This part is obviously totally up to you because we're not adding any other color to it. We're not adding any like shadows or highlights. So you don't know, need to know any color theory. This is just um, preference of like a you know favorite color of yours to add some um, text. Okay, you guys, so we all know the last thing to do. Grab your liner brush, whatever you like to sign your painting with. And for this one, I'm actually not gonna go in the direct bottom right portion of my um, painting tonight. I'm gonna go right inside where my Polaroid would be. So I'm gonna sign it right in this little corner. All right, you guys. And with that, I think we just completed Daisy Polaroid. So like always, thank you for painting along with me tonight. We do a Monday night paint class with Michaels every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Um, thank you guys so, so, so much for tuning in with us. Um, it is the highlight of my week when I get to do this with you all. Um, uh, thank you, Michaels, for allowing us to do a paint to do this paint night tonight. We're so happy that we were able to, and we'll catch you next time. Bye guys. Oh, wait, hold on Emma, oh, you gotta show next week's painting. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I bet you're all dying to know. Okay, so next week's painting is going to be painted by the very talented Kirsten Jones, and she is making this beautiful painting, and uh, she titled it Abstract house plant. So make sure to tune in next week, um, same time, same place for Kirsten's um, uh, rendition of abstract house painting. Yes. Um, like we, yes, like we said, thank you guys so much for tuning in with us. We love being here with you all and we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye everybody. We've lost Nate. He's not ending the class. Hmm. We could just hang out for the rest of the night and talk about <laughs> flower parts, octopi, and um, and the anatomy of a font, <laughs> if we want. It sounds riveting. It does sound riveting. <laughs> Nate, where are you? We're supposed to be done. He's disappeared. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Emma's like, I'm out. I'll see you.
Well, since we're just hanging out, gallery view. I'm gonna put it on gallery view. Everybody show their painting. Let's see how they came out. Hold them up. Oh, I would like I would love to see this. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. I never get to see this. Oh yeah. Can wait, are you back on? Can you see them? Can I see it in the phone? Wait, hold on. Hold on. Emma, everyone keep their painting up. I'm gonna run show Emma real quick. That looks awesome. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Wait, you put it on, you put it on, uh, yeah, that's awesome. Good job, everybody. Thank you guys so much for painting with me. Well, I don't know what we're supposed to do now. I guess you're just supposed to hit the leave button. I don't know. Bye, everybody. Thanks again. It was so awesome to see your paintings. I've never gotten to do that before. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks again. Bye.